coming up for sale on Wednesday the 16th of March at 10.30am is something we don't see often in UK auction houses, an original sunburst Gibson Les Paul standard. Commonly referred to as bursts, these are the undisputed holy grails of the electric guitar world. This example, from the most desired year, 1959, is the prime lot in the Guitars That Made History auction which is being held at the sale rooms of Dorr and Rees in the Somerset, England town of Froome. It's the highlight of a collection that belonged to the late James Llewellyn Morgan of the George Hatcher Band and Stan Webb's Chicken Shack. The sale is being handled by noted art and antiques journalist, writer and broadcaster Mark Allen, who you may recognise from the BBC's Antiques Roadshow. A keen player himself, Mark has kindly shared details that have enabled the making of this video. Sunburst Les Pauls, bursts as they have become known, had a shaky start in life. First appearing in 1958, their production came to an end in 1960. At that point, after poor sales, they were replaced by a double cutaway style. Initially also known as Les Paul guitars, by 1963, those new models were called SGs. The total number of sunburst standards produced in that original period was around 1,700. A fair number of those have yet to be accounted for. One of the first players to start using a Sunburst Les Paul was Keith Richards, who was first seen with one in 1964 during a US tour. That particular guitar was bought by him from Selmers in London, who had taken it in part exchange for a Gretsch country gent. It was later used to great effect by Mick Taylor and is widely thought to be the same guitar that not only can be seen in a recording studio photograph of Jimmy Page, but also was the one played by Eric Clapton at Cream's official debut, which took place on the 31st of July 1966 at the 6th National Jazz and Blues Festival in Windsor, England. In fact, it was arguably Eric Clapton who started the new interest in Sunburst Les Pauls. His tone and playing on the iconic Blues Breakers album, commonly known as the Beano album, caused a sensation in guitar circles when it was released on July the 22nd, 1966. That first sunburst of Eric's, which is referred to as the Beano burst, was stolen at an early cream rehearsal and has never been seen since, although its whereabouts are said to be known by a few. Contrary to popular belief of its being a 1960 guitar because of its supposedly slim neck, it has been said to carry a 1959 serial number. And so it was that from the second half of the 1960s, that interest in these instruments began to grow. Players such as Peter Green, Mike Bloomfield and Jeff Beck began to use them and in 1969 Joe Walsh sold one, partially refinished and having lost its serial number, to Jimmy Page. Other players began to seek them out. The demand increased as the new decade dawned, but with so few in existence, prices inevitably began to rise. At this point, we come to this particular guitar. Mark Allen takes up the story. 91865, he says, was bought by James circa 1972-73. Having taught himself guitar and becoming an accomplished musician, James visited Denmark Street in search of a cherishable instrument. And it was here that he found his beloved 59, he reputedly paid £450, or perhaps £495 for it, the modern equivalent of over £6,000. 
Provenance is of the utmost importance, and the Morgan Bursts is reassuringly solid, having been maintained and cared for by leading luthier Graham Noden shortly after it was acquired by James. As Mark explains... Believe it or not, this guitar was Graham Noden's first paying job. He refretted this in around about 1973 and became great friends with James, the owner. Now, with that impeccable history and the knowledge that Graham Noden, such a specialist guitar maker and luthier, having known this guitar since circa 1972-73 and maintaining it for his owner, James, it gives us a faultless timeline of the history of this guitar and its ownership. Casting our eyes over the Morgan Burst, we can see that the Cherry Sunburst finish has faded to that gorgeous honey colour that Burst fans know and love. The figuring on the top is subtle and attractive and will appeal to players like myself who prefer the plainer tops. There has been some refinishing to the sides of the guitar and the binding around the top is now a deeper shade of yellow than the original cream. Looking closely, we can see small holes on the face of the guitar and the bottom edge, suggesting that it was once fitted with a Bigsby tremolo arm. Mark Allen has noticed some traces of gilding on the stop tailpiece and on the bridge, which could suggest that they came from a Les Paul Custom when the Bigsby was removed. On the back of the guitar, we can see another hole where an extra strap button was once fitted and a further hole where the button on the top front edge of the upper has been moved at some point. Mark tells me that the pots and wiring appear to be original with some later solder repairs and that the guitar functions correctly. He also said that the PAF pickups, the rings, the pit guard, the poker chip switch surround, the switch tip itself, the top hat control knobs and the back plates are all original. This is good news for the new owner because finding replacements would set you back well into five figures. Unless it ends up in a glass case, whoever buys the guitar will no doubt set it up to their own taste. At present, it is as James left it, with the bridge reversed and the strings top-wrapped over the stop tailpiece. As with many guitars from the period, the Morgan Burst has lost its clues on tuners and now carries a set of Grover Rotomatics. The back of the headstock bears the holes left by the removal of the cluesons. Eagle-eyed viewers will notice that the guitar is just one serial number later than a well-known, very flamey burst that can be seen on page 90 of the famous Beauty of the Burst book. The Morgan Burst 91865 comes with the typical brown Gibson case, which is believed to be the original. Mark Allen sums it up like this. This guitar, he says, is a much cherished and well utilised example of the holy grail of the electric guitar world. Although many guitars came and went in James's life, his much prized 59 remained an absolute constant. It was gigged and enjoyed by James and his many friends, used in his studio, published in several magazines and often kept under his bed. As a fellow guitarist and having played this classic guitar myself, it is undoubtedly imbued with part of James's musical soul. As subscribers to this channel will be aware, I am lucky in having two custom shop Les Pauls a 2005 R9 and a 2010 R0. They are great guitars, but they are not originals. I just wish I had scraped together the money to get one back in the day, when I would occasionally see them advertised in the Melody Maker 
and sometimes on the walls of the little shops in Denmark Street for £1,500 to £3,000. You'll find a link to the auction catalogue, to the original video that Mark made for this guitar, and also to Mark's website in the details below. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Good luck if you bid for the guitar. Cheers for now.